Hi, my name is Jessica Visconti and I'm a licensed mental health counselor and an expressive arts therapist and I'm the facilitator for the Creative Grounding series here at Bristol Community College and these groups are a space for students to connect with each other, get a little creative and get in tune with some of their goals as well as just have some time to relax and take a break that's different from your regular classes. All of these groups happen um, live on Zoom as well as following up with these videos. So if you don't have time to do it when they're regularly scheduled, you can still use the materials in your box that was sent out by the office or um, if you have them at home, you can do that as well. They all follow the same format, starting with um, a brief meditation followed by an arts-based um, activity, whether that is uh, visual arts or something else and then um, a time to connect at the end. Today's focus is going to be on creating self-care boxes. So this is what they look like at the end and inside is filled with different pieces that you'll write um, to help remind yourself of what can help when you're really stressed or need to take a break. Um, so this one is a little bit more structured than some of the other activities, but it's also fun because you get to learn how to make a box. So some of the materials that you're going to need today are you will need two pieces of square paper and these were sent to you. Um, they were folded on the bottom of the Office of Student Engagement box. You'll also need some strips of paper. I have orange ones, but you also can just use white or whatever you have. Um, you'll need some type of pen or something to write with. Scissors and either glue or um, tape also works. And then if there's any other materials that you'd like to use, you're always welcome to bring extra art supplies if you have them. So we're just going to start um, today's meditation with just checking in with our bodies. You can always have your eyes either closed if that feels comfortable to you, or you're welcome to have a soft gaze with your eyes down and just start by checking in with your with your breath. It might feel nice to put a hand on your chest and then a hand on your stomach and starting to just really tune in with the rise and fall of your breath. Noticing how your chest rises when you inhale and feeling how your stomach and your chest fall as you exhale and just starting to check in if there's anything else calling your attention either physically or mentally just trying to bring yourself back to this moment as best you can. Not that any of those things aren't important, but just reminding yourself that you're here in this moment to take this space and do this activity just for yourself to take a break. And just breathing in anything that supports you in that goal and breathing out anything that you need to get rid of that's holding you back. And breathing in anything extra that you might need. And breathing out anything you'd like to let go of. Breathing in some kindness towards yourself and breathing out anything negative that might be coming up. And just taking a couple more minutes to set an intention for yourself for today's group practice, whether that's 
just to have space to be creative or if there's another intention that's bringing you here I'd like you to bring that to your mind's eye and if you're starting to get distracted or frustrated today just coming back to that intention and why you're including this as part of your your week and your um, academic responsibilities and just reminding yourself that this is just as important, taking time to yourself. And one more time, just breathing in your intention for today. And breathing out. All right, well now we can get started on some of our art making. So first we're just going to get started with one piece of square paper. There's not necessarily a specific top or, or bottom of this box. It will kind of um, pick each other, so to speak. They do come out the same size. So um, you might see on this one that um, I had had the orange one on the bottom, but if I want to switch it up, I can just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Ooh, this one's getting a little squish, but you can more or less... Um, change it no matter what so just start with either piece of paper and the first thing that we're going to do is just fold from corner to corner and this makes um a nice triangle and you're just trying to line it up as close as you can it certainly might not be perfect but just as close to the edge as you can and depending on the thickness of your paper, you're also welcome to use a pen or a marker or pencil if you need to some help with your folds. So you can just run it along the edge and that's called scoring. So when you hear me refer to that, that's what I'm specifically talking about. So you had your first fold, you're gonna open it up and then you're gonna do the same exact type of fold the opposite way. Again, corner to corner, folding this triangle, creating this shape. And then opening it up again. So this will form an X on your paper and that will help us line up some of the folds going forward. Um, after that, you're gonna start by folding all the corners into the center point that we've just made for ourselves. And you can also use the lines to kind of help line it up to make sure that it's um, really even if you are going for a kind of perfectionist type of box. But um, these ones are also pretty forgiving if you make any mistakes along the way or um, don't quite line everything up perfectly. But you want the goal here is that you want the folds to be as close together as they can without overlapping. So just continuing to fold all the corners in. And again, if you need to use your pen or pencil to kind of go along and score that, you can. And until you get to the fourth one. So this is what it will look like. Um, again, having all the corners into that center point as close as they can be without overlapping. And if you want to run something along to help them stay that way, you can. So the next piece that we're going to be doing is folding the sides in, um, creating this kind of vertical rectangle shape. And you can use, if you see this line on your paper, you can fold it to line up with that, but also, um, if, if that's a little hard, depending on the type of paper you're using, you're really just, again, folding as close as you can to the center point. So you're creating this type of fold. And then you're just following, again, with the opposite side, bringing that to meet each other. So it looks like this. I kind of like to think of this as a little folding door. And then you're going to actually open this fold up 
and then you're gonna repeat that. So this time we had gone this way, open it up, and now you're gonna be bringing the opposite sides in. Again, doing the same type of fold, bringing them to the middle. And um, my paper I'm using is pretty thick, so this is where I'm gonna use a pen to just run along the edge to help um, really se secure that fold. And then again, bringing the other side <laughs> you can see I'm struggling a little bit on right there to in to meet it and then again scoring along the edge and if your paper like I said is thinner you might not need to do that step so again creating the same door shape and then opening it up one more time So this next part is where um, if you have a, a marker, you can use it or a pen. And once you get a little bit more familiar with this, you might not need to do this part, but in the beginning I found it's helpful just so you know exactly where to cut. So I'm going to use the silver marker right here. So I'm drawing these lines so we can see. So they're going to be on these little these folds. And this way you'll have four perpendicular, or excuse me, parallel lines that all line up. And you might notice that you actually have the same lines on the other side, it doesn't matter which one because it's all, um, all the same. And then, like I said, these are going to be where you make your cuts. So cutting, just following along those lines. And you wanna cut all the way through so that this part is able to fold up and like trying not to get any cuts too far onto these pieces but if you do that's that's okay and then doing that again on the opposite side cutting straight along where you marked with your pe um your marker or pen and making sure you cut all the way through so you're able to unfold these pieces across from each other so this next part is where it gets a little bit tricky, but it is also the most exciting. It's where it starts to really become a box. Um, so you want to have these two shapes folded out. I like to think of this as a, as a house shape. And what we're going to be doing is bringing, so these two come up. There's these two, like, two squares that are next to this part that got unfolded and you're going to bring those into touch so bringing I'm gonna leave that down hopefully so you can see bringing these into touch and then bringing this side of your box up and over and then again on the opposite side bringing these pieces into touch and then bringing this fold over. And this will be creating one half of your box. So you can kind of see this one is, is not quite being as even as I'd like it to be. So I can, you can play with it a little bit as needed and definitely use your um, fingers to kind of pinch along if you need to secure any of the folds or sometimes I like to run my nails just in the box a little bit to help some of those folds as well and then the other piece that you can do is if you have your tape or if you want to use some glue you can just put a little dot inside here where you want to have those stay down so I think I'm going to do that So I actually ended up just putting a piece of tape in there because my glue was being a little difficult. Um, but yeah, so now you have a half of your box for today. So again, I'm just gonna go through that a little faster this time, um, but we're, that way we'll be working on making the second part of our box. So folding the triangle shape. I love this paper so much, I think it's so pretty. And then again, opening it up, folding. And then 
then again, going back to this, um, when you fold the four corners in, if anyone that's watching had made, um, cootie catchers, they were called when I was growing up, it's kind of a similar starting fold where you're bringing all the corners in to meet each other, but you are, once again, like I said, not overlapping. So if there's a little space, that's okay, just depending, um, if your paper is maybe not perfectly square, sometimes that happens, or like I know when I've cut them myself into squares, um, they don't always line up, but this paper is actually, is really close to being a perfect square, so it's lining up pretty nicely for me. Um, and then, so this is what this part looks like. And then again, going back to those um, long rectangles we made before, so bringing them all the way into the middle and then again on the opposite side opening it up and then doing the same type of fold so if you have um, some marks on your paper that can be a nice way to help line it up either um, with that or just with the center point. You can tell I'm struggling a little bit with this paper, but that's okay. And then opening it up again. So now you'll have created um, these marks and that is where you're going to be first drawing um, or if you feel comfortable, you can just go ahead and cut. But just so it's easier for everyone to see, I'm going to mark along those for myself. So it will be four parallel lines, and that is where you're going to be creating your cut. So on mine, oh, it's a little bit harder to see because this has reflective stuff on the paper, but that's where I'm going to be cutting with my scissors. So now, once again, we're going back to the folding part, so the part that is probably the most challenging, but also arguably the most exciting, at least for me, when it starts to actually become a box. So taking your square-shaped sides, bringing them in to meet each other, bringing this house fold over, you can actually see it kind of lines up, and then folding it in, pinching it if you need to a little bit, and then again on the opposite side, folding these pieces in, and bringing this piece over, and then you have a box, and if you need to, like I said, there's the glue that was included in your programming box, or um, mine was being a little bit difficult, so I did just put a little piece of um, scotch tape. So you can see mine's kind of going like that, not quite staying on its own. So I just bring the pieces tighter to the edge, use my opposite hand and just put a little piece of tape in there. So now between the two sections that we folded, you have your box. I'm hoping that this one fits on top um, with the sparkly stars, but I might have to wiggle it a little bit. All right. So now the first kind of part of our project is done. So the next um, piece of our project is going to be making what goes in the box. Um, so what I had suggested for our time is using um, strips of paper. Since you're at home, if you have other materials you'd like, you could always um, do this a little bit different. But just using these strips of paper, the idea is that you're going to be writing down um, self-care reminders that you might need. Um, so if you want to keep this on your desk or in your car or somewhere else, um, the idea is that you then will draw a piece, take a piece out, and it will be something that you can do to relax if you need to. So one thing that I always include in mine is taking a shower. 
especially um, at night if I'm stressed. And then you can either fold it or if you want to roll it up you can. Um, some other things that I include are taking a walk and that's a good one because you can do that even if you're at work or something. It might be hard to take a shower if you're in the middle of your work day or if you're in class. It also, you can include things like favorite quotes or affirmations. Um, one I'm going to write down now is I've done my best by leave the rest. And you're welcome to get as creative with this as you want. If you'd like to use colored pencils or markers or different colors, um, whatever works for you and feels and feels good for you. I'm going to put something about breathing on my next one. And at the end you will have your self-care box. Um, and hopefully you can use this to remind yourself ways that you can relax or take a break or um, some things you might need to hear in moments of stress. And then you're welcome to, um, if you want to decorate or add anything on the sides or inside, you're welcome to do all of that too. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this helped um, you relax and maybe learn something new or even just take time for yourself. Um, and I look forward to seeing you either on Zoom or hopefully you'll be able to use my next video for our group that will be on Thursday, April 1st at 12 p.m. All right, thank you. Bye.